Most people know of Toyota's reputation for reliable, quality-built cars. As a mechanic, I've worked on tons of different cars over the last five decades, and I can personally attest to Toyota's quality myself. The reliability of a Toyota is largely to do with its low number of mechanical issues. But here's something not many people know. Buying a Toyota will actually save you a lot of money. Today, I'll show you just how much compared to other brands. Now, when I talk about longevity, I'm not necessarily referring to the number of years you drive the car, although that is important. But more importantly, I'm referring to the number of miles. The more miles your car can drive, the more value you get out of the purchase price that you paid, whether you bought it new or used. Toyotas have an average lifespan of 200,000 to 250,000 miles or more, which is higher than many other brands. And if you take proper care and maintenance, Toyotas can easily be driven beyond the 500,000 miles and exceed expectations. But don't just take my word for it, there's living proof and tons of it. Take Mike Neal, for example. He has a 2008 Toyota Tacoma, which he uses to drive all around North Carolina and Virginia to deliver nuclear medicine for PET scans for cancer patients. And his trusty Tacoma surpassed 1.5 million miles. Mike said his secret is preventative maintenance. He does his monthly oil changes himself because he drives 10,000 miles a month. Right now, this Tacoma has a new engine and a new transmission, but it's impressive that the transmission even lasted a million miles. Believe it or not, the suspension, steering, drive shaft, and axle components are still going strong at 1.5 million miles. There's also Victor Shepard. His 2007 Toyota Tundra passed 1 million miles on the odometer, an original engine and transmission. Toyota celebrated by giving Victor a brand new Tundra. Another man, Aaron Morvan, also had a 2007 Toyota Tundra. His truck also lasted 1 million miles on the original engine. The original transmission gave out after 792,000 miles. But nevertheless, you have to admit, that's pretty remarkable. There's Mark Miller. His 06 Toyota Highlander passed 1 million miles. Toyota was so impressed, they gave Mark a brand new Highlander hybrid for free. If you haven't seen my video about it, check it out. Or Manfred Dvorak. He was a taxi driver in Austria when his 2005 Toyota Prius passed 620,000 miles on the original battery. Or look at Michael Lipperman. His 01 Toyota Avalon was still using the original engine and transmission when he passed the 500,000 mile mark. I wouldn't be surprised if it becomes a million mile car too. Anyway, these are just a handful of real life examples that show the high quality of Toyota cars. But of course, in most, if not all these cases, these owners were strict about their car's regular maintenance, never skipping a beat. And that's the other half of the story. You have to do your part and take care of your car if you want your car to last. Recently, there was a study done to gauge the longevity of cars we see operating on our roads today. Basically, two million cars, trucks, and SUVs were studied to see how many miles each car could rack up during its lifetime. Then the cars were stack ranked. Of the top 20, the Toyota Sequoia topped the chart with 296,509 miles. This was followed by the Toyota Land Cruiser at 280,236 miles. And then the Chevy Suburban at 265,732 miles. In fact, 10 of the top 20 cars were Toyotas. The list was very heavy with trucks and large SUVs, which is no surprise, because these vehicles are built to handle more than the average passenger car or a sedan. That said, only three sedans made the top 20 list, and no surprise, those three sedans were all Toyotas. I'm talking about the Toyota Prius, Avalon, and Camry Hybrid. Of the trucks on the list that reached over 200,000 miles, the top three that passed the most miles were the Toyota Tundra, the Honda Ridgeline, and the Toyota Tacoma. Then the Nissan Titan, Ford F-150, Chevy Silverado, GMC Sierra, Ford Ranger, Nissan Frontier, and Ram 1500. Of all the minivans, the one that racked up the most miles was, again, the Toyota. I'm talking about Toyota Sienna. It beat the Honda Odyssey, Dodge Grand Caravan, and Kia Sedona. Here's another area when buying a Toyota will save you money. Maintenance or repair costs. Toyotas are known for being low maintenance cars as they are. And even when you do take them in for regular maintenance, the cost is relatively low compared to most other brands. On top of that, the average Toyota requires few repairs over the course of its lifetime. So here's the question, how much will these repairs cost you? And how does that compare to other cars in the industry? Well, one study found that Toyotas typically average about 441 bucks in maintenance and repair costs each year. Put it in perspective, the industry averages 652 bucks. That's more than a $200 difference. That ends up being thousands of dollars of savings in the long run. Another study found that Toyota models average around $5,996 in maintenance and repair costs during the first 10 years of service. This is $818 less than the industry average. During these 10 years of service, there's also a 13.5% chance that a Toyota will require a major repair, which is almost 7% better compared to the other car manufacturers. 
Some of the most common repairs reported by Toyota's are brake pad replacements, which will cost you an from $205 to $286. Spark plug replacements, which can cost between $127 and $456. And alternator replacements from $464 to $795. By the way, did you know that extended car warranties don't cover every repair? And most don't cover the cost of recommended maintenance either. Whether you have an extended warranty or not, you should regularly maintain your car and get it serviced. Not everyone knows this, but most extended warranties can actually be voided if you don't follow the manufacturer's recommended maintenance schedule. But at least when it comes to Toyota, every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care. This covers scheduled maintenance for two years or 25,000 miles. When you bring your vehicle to a Toyota dealer, a technician will check fluid levels, filters, and other wear and tear items. They'll also perform any regular maintenance and repairs using Toyota OEM parts. Of course, once your Toyota Care coverage expires, it's time to pay up for any all maintenance costs yourself. Here's something else not many people know. It's another way Toyota saves you money. If you drive a Toyota, likely you can get lower insurance costs. Let me explain. In general, when it comes to car insurance premiums, there are many factors that impact that, of course. There are factors you can control, like your own driving records and behavior, as well as things you can't control, like your age and gender. But all things being equal, your car's make, model, and year have a major impact on how high or low your insurance premium will be. Reason is, insurance companies have their own repair cost stats and data. But since Toyotas in general have relatively low repair costs and high reliability, this is the reason why many insurance companies offer better premium rates on Toyota as compared to other brands. In particular, certain Toyotas like Highlander, Sienna, Tacoma, for example, have a reputation for being affordable to insure. Another way of getting a Toyota to save you money is related to its high safety standards. So there's the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, also known as IIHS, and the Highway Loss Data Institute, or HLDI. They test cars each year to see how safe they are. Toyota consistently wins among its top safety pick and top safety pick plus awards. I think it's safe to assume that safer cars can generally equate to less repair costs and less medical bills in the event of a collision. Toyotas are generally more fuel efficient compared to other brands, especially its hybrid models. One study even found that cars like the Prius and Camry Hybrid offer exceptional fuel economy. In fact, they can save up to $10,000 in fuel costs over the course of 250,000 miles compared to similarly sized non-hybrid cars. Another area where your Toyota can save you money is resale value if you decide to sell your car later on. Whether you buy a new or used vehicle, the biggest expense most people see with their vehicles ends up being depreciation. That's because unless you're buying a collectible or classic cars, all cars depreciate. And your vehicle will be worth less when you sell it than when you originally bought it. The thing is, not all vehicles depreciate the same amount or at the same time. After all, some vehicles are more popular than other models or are less expensive to maintain or convey a better image of quality. But here's where Toyota can help you. Toyotas in general hold a higher resale value than many other brands. Let me put it in perspective. The average 2023 model, your vehicle from any brand will only retain about 45% of its value after five years. But based on stacks, a 2023 Toyota Tundra should retain 73.3% of its value after five years, and that's a higher resale value than any other competing models in its category. The 2023 Toyota Tacoma ranked second place with a five-year resale value of 65.8%. A 2023 Toyota 4Runner has a projected five-year resale value of 64.4%. A 2023 Toyota Toyota Sienna should hold 59.3 of its value, and a 2023 Toyota RAV4 Prime should retain 56% of its value. But let's say you hold on to these cars for longer than five years. In fact, let's say you rack up a lot of miles because you really want to get the most out of your car. Well, in general, any car that passes 100,000 miles is considered high mileage, and cars with that many miles normally have low resale value. But there's a thing about high mileage Toyotas. Because Toyotas are known for such long-lasting durability, Toyotas with high mileage tend to retain a lot more resale value value than other brands with similar miles. For decades, Toyota has churned out many impressive and reliable engines, including engines that last a million miles, and engines that he can pump out 700 horsepower, the Lexus LFA. It's a two-seat luxury sports car Lexus made in 2012, and unfortunately, the line lasted just one year in the market. But the engine was another story. It took Lexus almost 10 years to develop the LFA. Lexus finally debuted it in October 2009, and Akio Toyota presented it himself. Under the hood of the LFA was a V10 engine. The name of the engine was the 1LRGUE, and it was hailed as a Japanese masterpiece with arguably one of the best sounding engines to come out of a production car. The reason is, it was co-developed with Yamaha Motor, who developed the acoustic design concept. 
Let me tell you why it's one of the greatest V10 engines of all time. First of all, it wasn't necessarily its output, which was 553 horsepower and 354 pound-feet of torque, which translates to 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds. But Toyota's goal wasn't to create the highest performing engine. Instead, it was to give drivers one of the lightest, best sounding, and most advanced V10s ever. I'm talking about high tech, construction, and high revving capability. The 1LR GUE was a 4.8 liter naturally aspirated V10, but it was compact, smaller than previous Lexus V8s in fact, and weighed lighter than a conventional V6. It ran smoothly and at a 72 degree angle between two banks of cylinders for better balance and lightweight construction. The engine got its oxygen supply through a dual stage variable intake manifold. This thing could rev up from idle to redline in just 0.6 seconds. In fact, it's a world record for a production car in 2012. Strange Usually enough, no analog tachometer could keep up with it, so Toyota had to create a digital alternative. The LFA was Lexus's halo car. In other words, a car built by a brand to remind customers what the brand is all about. And there's a ton of extra carbon fiber in the car. I'm talking carbon fiber chassis, carbon fiber hood, even a carbon fiber steering wheel. Well, the LFA finally came to the market in 2012, but here's the thing, it was a bit late to the game. By then, fancy sports cars like Nissan GTR, Chevy Corvette ZR1, and Lamborghini Murcielago were already on the market. Just look at the GTR, for example. This Japanese-made sports car was arguably a better performing sports car, but it also happened to be five times cheaper than the LFA. But there were other issues too. Because Lexus took so long to design the LFA, there were some design decisions that were too late to go back on. For example, the transmission was a six-speed single clutch, but it really should have been a dual-clutch transmission. Plus, the price tag was 350000 bucks, which is expensive even by today's dollar. But mind you, this was 11 years ago. Another complication is that even if you had that kind of cash, Lexus initially didn't allow consumers to buy the LFA but you had to lease it from Lexus instead. All this is to say the LFA failed as a production car. Only about 500 were ever made, and even then the dealerships didn't sell those out. Another great Toyota engine is the 4AGE. It's an inline Ford that actually came out in 1983. It was small, light, and nimble like a bee, capable of reaching crazy revs and horsepower figures. The first generation found its way under the hood of the 1983 Toyota Corolla. Actually, it was one of the first Japanese mass-produced engines with dual overhead camshaft and four valves per cylinder. The engine evolved to later become one of the first five valve per cylinder engines ever made when the 20 valve silver top was produced eight years later in 1991. In total, the 4 AGE saw five generations before it was discontinued in 2000. The most well-known car with its engine under the hood was the cultural icon, the Toyota Corolla AE86. But it also powered cars like Celica, Corona, and Sprinter at one time or another. The engine also made it into cartoon animation. The 4 AGE engine featured in the popular street racing Japanese Magnum anime series Initial D. Next up is the Toyota 2GRFE engine. This is one of Toyota's lesser known performance engines, but it still deserves a spot on today's list in my opinion. The 3.5 liter V6 was introduced back in 2004, nearly 20 years ago. The 2GRFE replaced the previous 1MZFE V6 engines and inline 6 2JZ engines. After its introduction, the engine quickly became a core part across multiple Toyota vehicles like Camry, Highlander, Avalon, Venza, and the RAV4. Soon it was also used in other vehicles like the Lexus IS 350, GS 350, RX 350, and more. Lotus also used the supercharged 2 GRFE in the Loda Evora S and XZS vehicles, and at present we see it in the Lotus Amira. This engine is naturally aspirated, and it outputs 295 to 314 horsepower and 248 to 260 pound-feet of torque. So you can see this engine is small but mighty, and it's earned a reputation for its reliability and being built to last. Just like the Toyota 1GRFE engine, the 2GRFE has an open deck type cast aluminum alloy cylinder block with spiny type cast iron cylinder liners, known as the sleeves. But unlike the 1GR, the 2GR was created for transverse mounting. This mount could be used in front wheel drive vehicles. The 2GR was almost 7 pounds lighter than the 1GR. Next, we have the Toyota 2JZ GTE engine. This is an inline six, and I'm talking air intercooled, twin turbocharged, belt driven, dual overhead camshaft, cast iron block cylinder, aluminum head, designed and manufactured by Toyota. Here in the US, it was available in the Super Turbo models as early as 1993 till 1998. But over in Japan, the 2JZ GTE engine was first introduced in 1991 in the Toyota Aristo. 
Because this is an inline six engine, the primary and secondary forces that are generated by the movement of the pistons cancel each other out. This makes for a naturally smooth running and balanced engine. Plus, it also allows for extra space in the engine bay if you ever wanted to install bigger turbos. The two JZ share some similarities with the Nissan RB26DETT inline six. Unlike V type engines, half of the block's rotated assembly doesn't get thrown around the opposite directions. Instead, the two JZ, its three front cylinders do the opposite of the rear. So we're talking an even distribution of weight, and that means the typical polar rocking motion you find in a V6 engine is not there. Instead, the two JZ can rev higher, longer, safer, and smoother. Speaking of revving and power, the 2JZ GTE inline six engine is also well known for its ability to double power levels. This engine can pump out 700 horsepower and somehow still stay in one piece. Now that's impressive. It's possible because it's built out of heavier duty or cast iron instead of aluminum. It has a solid deck to ward off cylinder movements and it's stuffed inside a forged crank. Because the cylinder head itself is aluminum, it's lightweight and also enables faster heat dissipation. The pistons are also cast aluminum and have slight dish tops. Because of this, the 2JZ GTE has a lower compression ratio. On top of that, seven main caps keep the crank from shifting. Under piston oil squirters also cool the rotating assembly and keep it lubricated at high RPMs. Of course, no engine is perfect, and the 2JZ GTE is no exception. Some disadvantages of this engine, including things like the oil pump seal possibly blowing out, a poor flowing cylinder head, a failure prone sequential turbo system, and failure prone timing belt tensioner brake. Last but not least is one of the most popular V8 engines Toyota ever built, and that's the 2UZ FE. This engine is known for its solid balance of performance and reliability. It was a 4.7 liter V8 engine that made its debut in 1989. It outputs something like 228 to 271 horsepower, depending on the car model and year. Originally, Toyota designed this engine to replace the outdated Toyota 5V engine. You can find two UZFE engines under the hoods of vehicles like the Lexus GX470 and LX470. You can also fit it in older models of the Toyota Land Cruiser, Forerunner, Tundra, and Sequoia. But you won't find any modern Toyotas with this engine because Toyota discontinued it back in 2013. This is also the same engine that made the famous Million Mile Tundra. Story goes that a man by the name of Victor Shepard bought a new 2007 Tundra with the 2UZ FE engine. He told the general manager of the Toyota dealership, Ron Weimer, he was going to put a million miles on it. Ron played along, but the truth is, Ron didn't really think it had happened. Fast forward nine years, the truck's odometer hit 999,999 miles and stopped counting. Victor thought the truck was going to turn over. He took it to the dealership to get it inspected, but there was nothing wrong with the truck. The odometer just didn't have a way to track any more miles. Just goes to show even Toyota didn't think it would make it to a million miles. Anyway, Victor started using the trip odometer to keep track. Ultimately, the truck reached more than 1,020,000 miles before the Toyota dealership offered Victor a brand new 2016 Tundra double cab in exchange for his million mile. Toyota then took the old 2007 Tundra, tore it down, and examined all the nuts and bolts to see how to improve future virgins to make them last even longer. Of course, I can't talk about great Toyota engines without making a special mention of Toyota hybrid cars. Here's the thing about hybrid vehicles. Hybrid cars are actually more reliable than convention gas power cars and they have the potential to last a long time. There are a few reasons for this. If you look inside a hybrid vehicle, there's a traditional internal combustion engine and at least one electric motor or generator unit. First of all, an electric motor doesn't have as many moving parts compared to internal combustion engines. Because of this, you usually see a hybrid vehicle's electric motor lasting longer than the rest of the vehicle. As well, when you hit the accelerator pedal in a stationary hybrid vehicle, it's the electric motor that gets it going. Just think, an electric motor makes its maximum torque from zero RPM instantaneously. This also gives the internal combustion engine time to start up and reach optimal RPM before it takes over at higher speeds. This is how the electric motor reduces wear and tear on the internal combustion engine and extends the life of the internal combustion engine. Hybrid vehicles excel in stop and go driving. That's why the Ford Maverick Hybrid, for example, offers better fuel economy in city driving than on the highway. Or take a look at the new 2023 Ford F-150 Hybrid. If you invest in the expensive Power Boost upgrade, but you drive mainly on highways, Power Boost upgrade would probably never pay for itself. But if you're mostly driving in the city, you can see the upgrade pay for itself eventually if you own the truck for long enough. 
don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that hybrids are perfect. In general, they're more expensive to make, and they require a high voltage traction battery to store the energy the electric motor captures through regenerative braking. As the battery wears out over time, the hybrid vehicle becomes less efficient. Later, when it needs to be replaced, you're looking at thousands of dollars in battery replacement costs. But the good news is that the traction batteries in many hybrids today can last 100,000 or even 150,000 miles. Toyota's current generation hybrid system has come a long way since the first generation. The Camry Hybrid, for example, now is a bigger engine, and there's also more room to put more under the hood, like a 12 volt battery, for example. There's another improvement which has to do with the battery. For decades, the batteries in Toyota's hybrids were heavy and took up way too much space. But with this new generation, Toyota's been incorporating lithium ion batteries that are lighter. For example, the nickel metal hydrate battery in a Prius weighs 85 to 86 pounds. In a similar model with a much more powerful lithium ion battery, you're you're looking at a weight of only 52 pounds. That's a 30 pound difference. The less weight your hybrid has to lug around, the more efficient it is. Toyota also made its batteries more compact to allow even more space for other necessary components. Take the 2022 Camry Hybrid, for example. The trunk looks pretty standard, but if you look deeper, you'll see that the battery that was hogging all the space behind the seat is now hidden under the back seat. But now you tell me, what do you think is the most reliable Toyota engine? Please share by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.